Hi guys, um, as I mentioned in my other uh, video, I wanted to do this uh, complimentary tutorial to show you how uh, easy it is to use Mixer to create your own uh, textures uh, to be used in X-Tile. Uh, X-Tile being, of course, the non-repetitive tiling material for uh, Unreal. And if you haven't seen that uh, video, I suggest uh, you check it out. Um, this is uh, an optional part and uh, not a necessity to getting non-repetitive tiling, but it will uh, greatly increase your uh, uh, usage and uh, flexibility of uh, using uh, X-Tile. Um, as I mentioned uh, previously uh, in my uh, X-Tile tutorial, using um, X-Tile will force you to source and create textures in a sort of different manner than what perhaps you guys have been used to. Uh, it involves perhaps a few extra steps to get to the results you want to, but um, in return uh, you uh, get uh, non-repetitive textures that can, can be applied to uh, any surface um, uh, you're working on. Um, of course, uh, Mixer is just uh, one way of uh, getting the result. You can use uh, other software like Substance Designer and um, Alchemist or anything else uh, you guys want to try. I just found that Mixer is, uh, together with Bridge, is uh, complementary to each other and work uh, really well. And uh, it's like a robust way of uh, getting uh, very uh, good and uh, easy results. Uh, just a little uh, recap on uh, how uh, Xtile works. Uh, the main reason we want to do this is that Xtile uh, randomizes uh, our part pattern first before allowing us to uh, shift. Uh, our tiles in any direction. So um, this gives us a great fle flexibility uh, in the uh, pattern arrangement uh, um, because uh, basically we're uh, doing it in uh, the material inside Unreal. But at the same time it forces us to rethink our initial texture makeup. Um, but thankfully Mixer is such a great and easy tool to work with that we can create uh, any sort of texture we want to work uh, in X-Tile. And this is what I'll be showing, how easy it is to uh, to do such a texture. So um, first things first, let's uh, start by uh, opening uh, Mixer. And here I am in uh, uh, 2019, uh, awaiting 2020, uh, which uh, hopefully will be released soon. But um, uh, the first thing I want to do is uh, come uh, up to here on the right and I'm going to add a, uh, my first solid layer and uh, what I would need to do is uh, create another solid layer because uh, Mixer does uh, not allow the uh, mask stack to be created if there's uh, nothing below the, the, the layer that we're adding the stack to. So uh, once we've done that, uh, we can come down to the bottom here. Um, there's a little icon, and uh, once we click it, we'll add a mask stack. Um, this creates an empty mask stack, and uh, on the top, we can see uh, the icons that uh, will allow us to uh, add uh, the various filters uh, to create uh, our mask. Um, the one that uh, we want to go to is this uh, uh, one on the right which is a little hidden and if you click on it you will see that uh, what basically this uh, gives us is some preset uh, mask stacks uh, uh, that uh, have already been tweaked uh, to create these effects. Um, the one that uh, we'll be using is the uh, this uh, bricks old but uh, you're more than welcome to experiment with uh, some others that are here. Uh, so once you click that you will see that uh, we have our uh, uh, we've already created our uh, bricks. Um, in uh, if for whatever reason you cannot see this, uh, make sure that uh, your threshold is uh, set to a high enough level uh, to uh, push the effect through. And uh, this is a great starting point uh, to creating uh, what uh, we uh, want. So. Um, uh, the next thing is to uh, come back into our uh, uh, mask stack and go uh, down to the base and uh, let's uh, try and tweak uh, the settings to what uh, we're after. Right, so um, once uh, we have this uh, we can start uh, tweaking a little the uh, repeat X and Y. 
I'm going to change the uh, repeat uh, Y to uh, from 13 to 20, which should give us a little bit a little bit more um, uh, bricks to work with uh, and a little more variation. I'm going to also increase the spacing a little uh, to uh, sort of uh, widen the uh, brick pattern a little. Um, and um, from here, I'm going to change uh, what uh, is uh, the most important setting, which is the offset. And uh, basically, uh, this is why we're actually creating uh, this uh, texture from scratch, is to uh, be able to take this offset and uh, put it all the way down or back to uh, 1, uh, if you want. And uh, from here, uh, we'll, we've kind of already started to uh, create uh, the type of texture uh, we want. Right, so uh, now we can uh, introduce uh, some uh, more parameters here and uh, uh, sort of uh, give, it, uh, give our texture some more variation. So if we uh, uh, open uh, this uh, tab here, we'll have uh, a few more options to play with. Uh, we can uh, change the jitter, uh, brightness jitter. Uh, by default, uh, it uh, reverts to the uh, maximum, uh, so we need to dial that down um, to uh, something uh, definitely lower, something like that maybe, um, just to add some uh, jitter. Uh, we can also do the same with the size, again, uh, dialing it down uh, to uh, uh, some just to add some um, a little bit of uh, size variation um, in our texture. Um, the last thing I want to do here is uh, introduce the uh, cutout, uh, just to uh, uh, increase that also a little bit, uh, so that uh, we can have some nice uh, uh, cutouts uh, of our texture. So uh, we could stop here, but uh, let's uh, go one step further and uh, add uh, one more uh, uh, filter to our stack. Uh, let's go up here and uh, add another uh, noise. I'd like to uh, add another pearly noise. Uh, let's uh, tweak these parameters a little. Let's change the seed down to uh, something like uh, somewhere here. Let's uh, dial down the amplitude a little. Also, somewhere here, uh, I'd like to uh, turn on the uh, octaves, something like seven, and let's uh, just turn on the local narrative a little bit more, maybe somewhere like here. And then from here, let's uh, just blend it uh, using a max uh, blend. And uh, this is it. This is the basis of our uh, texture. Uh, from here, uh, we'll be uh, introducing uh, the mega scans, and uh, let's uh, finish up. Right, so now let's go back uh, into our local library. This is uh, local, my local library of uh, textures that uh, I've already downloaded, and uh, you can also come here to the online uh, library, which gives you access to all of mega scans uh, textures that can be imported uh, directly into a mixer. But uh, let's go back to local library, because uh, I've already downloaded the textures that we'll be using. Uh, for our first texture, I want to use this uh, brick wall. And if I click on it, uh, it uh, already uh, comes uh, directly into uh, on the uh, layer stack. And I would need to increase the, sh uh, the threshold so that we can start looking uh, seeing the texture being applied, and uh, I'm also going to increase the uh, wrap to base, which uh, is uh, a way to blend this uh, texture with the uh, bottom uh, uh, normals, uh, which uh, creates a nice sort of uh, blend between the two. And uh, let's go back into our local library and let's add this uh, rough brick wall. I'm going to also, uh, actually I'm going to change this uh, from above. I'm going to bring uh, this uh, texture uh, threshold down to somewhere uh, here, say. And um, again, I'm going to wrap to base um, to 
to somewhere, say here. Um, <clears throat> and let's go back into our local library and let's try and get, uh, uh, let's see what we have. We have concrete rough. Let's import that. And again, same uh, deal. Let's uh, increase the threshold to, again, something that nice and viewable uh, let's uh, wrap to base uh, by a little bit okay it's already beginning to look uh, like a nice uh, brick texture um, and uh, but I'd like to uh, continue let's um, let's go back into our local uh, library here and let's add this old fort which uh, tried and it works very nicely again let's uh, push this and uh, threshold and let's wrap to base so we have uh, a nice and a nice texture uh, this is uh, this is it I mean um, this is already a texture that uh, we can use in X tile to create a nice uh, brick a non-repetitive brick uh, surface. Um, uh, we could add more if uh, if we wanted to. We could add this, uh, for example, wet cement or mm, yeah, let's try this wet cement. See what it takes, uh, where it takes us. Let's just uh, increase that a little bit, maybe, and let's again wrap to base, just to give it a little more variation, um, and. That's it. Uh, we have uh, a great texture that uh, we can uh, work with. Um, the next thing that uh, what we can do is uh, we can uh, go up to here. Uh, we can either export the text. Sorry, um, we can actually uh, yes come back to here and export to library. And what this will do is uh, it will take our texture, um, and we can uh, sort of uh, let's go in. Uh, some of these things so it's a wall but we can change the resolution if we wanted to and we can enter uh, a tag like a brick uh, and then we would export it and once we export it this this texture would uh, be uh, already set up in bridge and uh, through bridge uh, we can use our X tile uh, material to just uh, simply uh, export uh, uh, the texture set and it would create an instance in Unreal. Um, the other way of course is to just uh, simply come to uh, here to the right and export the maps as uh, as you would normally do and just import them in Unreal and uh, use with uh, Xtile. Of course uh, this is the beginning and you can go as fancy as you want adding more textures and playing with the uh, mass stack parameters and adding more uh, filters um, but this is the uh, general workflow to getting your textures ready for uh, Xtile uh, to get rid of uh, any uh, repetitiveness in your tiling textures. As you saw, it's uh, quite a relatively simple process uh, with uh, lots of room to experiment and to build on. Um, I hope uh <coughs> you found it useful and you'll give it a try. Um, and um, Good luck with your projects and take care.